just gonna we're gonna work on this problem and uh, we have a 1k resistor as the input and uh, we have a 10k uh, on the return line we just think of the current as it's going through we have we have an imaginary power supply you know here between these two things plus minus I don't know voltage source maybe a current Norton whatever but we have a voltage here and, and let's say 10 volts okay this is imaginary we're trying to solve a problem about equivalent resistance for the circuit, but in order to have equivalent resistance, the application of that or the usage of that is for a source. So we can create the source any way we want to. If we put 10 volts here, we know that there's going to be some current that's going to go through this. We also have a clue because we're looking at the individual uh, individual scale. So these are all going to be kilo ohms, right? So if we're in the 10 volt uh, input range, we can kind of expect that there's going to be milliamps of current or at least hundreds of microamps at the end of the day. So that kind of gives us the clue of, of what the value we can expect. Uh, so here we are. We haven't even done anything yet and we're just kind of looking at the circuit, getting the lay of the land of how we might go about solving it. Um, it is easier to do parallel combinations when the values are the same. We know that if we they are the same value, uh, that they are going to uh, divide by half. So we're going to get 6 in parallel with 6, which is 3. And we also have a 3 up there, so that's an interesting aspect of that. And then we might take that 3 and we might create a parallel combination with the 6. And whatever va that value is, it's going to be the same value as this one. So we know that these resistances um, are going to ultimately end up to be the same. These are going to become a 3. These are going to become a value, which will determine it. And that value is going to be the same as here. So now I think we have enough information to go about solving it. First thing that we're going to do is going to create the resistor R sub A, and that's going to be for those two combinations. And uh, I forgot to do this, but you can label these, you, you know, pr provide reference designators on them. 3, R4, R5, R6, R7, and R8. You know, and that's how I that's how I'd go about doing it. Always index before because it just makes it a little bit easier symbolically. Anyway, we have uh, R A is going to be equal to resistances six and seven in parallel combination, and that's going to be equal to six K over two using the shorthand rule for this. Ordinarily, that would be R six times R seven divided by R six plus R seven, but we can just use the shorthand rule since they are the same value. That's going to end up being 3k ohms. Typically when I'm working out these problems, I will leave the unit out of it because it's kind of assumed that it's resistance. And then I'll put it back in at the end. Uh, but you can you can retain it all the way through if you want to. So anyway, this stuff is going to become 3k. So I'm going to actually erase this. It's a little bit easier to erase rather than to redraw everything. You know, here. So I have this. I'm just going to actually I'm going to delete the stub here just to make it a little easier. There we go. All right. So then the re the remaining resistance, oops, right there. There we go. Right there, and that is R A, bigger R. There we go. And we have three K ohm right there. Okay. So then now we have a three K ohm resistor there, and a six K there, and a six K there. So. We're going to look to see what it would be like to solve the parallel combination of this. So we're going to call RB equal to RA in parallel with R5, which is going to be equal to RA multiplied by R5 divided by RA plus R5. And that's going to be 3 times 6, which is going to be 18k ohms squared, right, because it's ohm times ohm, divided by, we have 3 plus 6, so it's going to be 9 kilo ohms. All right there, okay, you know, the this whole quantity is squared, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. So having kilo ohm and kilo ohm there gets rid of the square, and then we're going to equal to 2k ohms, and that's our answer there. So we have 2k in that place. So now we're going to erase these two resistors, or we could redraw them, but for the sake of time, it's easier for me to, to erase right there. And this is RB at 2K, okay? Now we know that that 6K and 3K combination here is what was helpful. So we're, we know that that's gonna be the same thing. So we can resolve this to 2K as well. So we just know that, right? 
because, well, I mean, it would be it would probably be good to go through the math real quick, you know. They might be able to shorthand just a little bit. RC is going to be that combination is equal to R1 in parallel with R4 equal to R1 times R4 divided by R1 plus R4. And that's going to be equal to, same thing here, right, 18 kilo ohm squared over 9 kilo ohm. It's going to be equal to 2 kilo ohm. So now all the work is done. We can remove these two. Delete them like that. And now we can put the resistor back here. This is going to be R. Oops. I'm going to call it RC, right? RC, and we have 2 kilo ohms. Okay, so that's cool. So then now we have two kilo ohm resistor up here. These are in parallel. So RD is going to be equal to RC in parallel with two, with uh, this is R2, and that's going to be equal to two K divided by two, which is equal to one kilo ohm. Okay, so now we can delete these two, just like that. And we have R, D, and 1K. All right, great. So now this is now this is much easier to work with. We have 1K resistance in series with 1K, in series with 2K, in series with 10K. So now we can calculate the equivalent resistance for all of it. R E Q. It just happens to be that D, you know, E comes after D, but I'm going to just write E Q here. So we have 1K plus 1K plus 2k plus 10k 2k plus 2k is 4k plus 10k equal to 14k ohms and that is your equivalent resistance for this circuit now